everyone. Welcome to the All Brands Show. I'm Barbara from allbrands.com, and we are so excited today to be hosting Tim Bond from the, uh, he's a Juki expert and a great friend of allbrands.com, and he's going to be showing us some really great Juki professional machines. Now, Juki is a Japanese-based company. Um, they produce uh, a lot of industrial machines. They're actually the most preferred industrial machine on the market. And um, there is a good chance that this shirt that I'm wearing or your shirt that you're wearing, if you're wearing a shirt, <laughs> if you're wearing a shirt uh, or <laughs> any clothing that you're wearing, there's a very good probability that it was sewn on a Juki industrial machine. So I think that it's so amazing that um, the manufacturing and technology that they put into these machines, they are workhorses. Uh, so we're going to be looking at three different machines today. We also have a giveaway at the end of this broadcast. So how, how do you... <laughs> How do you get into the giveaway? Well, everyone's eligible. As long as you're watching live, you just put the comment, hashtag all brands, and that will enter you to win. So please uh, go ahead and do that now. We'll remind you throughout the event uh, about that. So I hope that you're having a great day and you're ready to learn more about these amazing machines from Tim Bond. And I'll bring him in. Tim, hi. Hey, Barbara, how are you today? Fantastic. That's I love good. Juki machines. I have a I special know you do. And I am always honored to be able to come and do a show with you. It's always fun. And hopefully today we'll have a little fun and a little education because what's fun without having something to learn? It could just be fooling around. But you know what? You know me, I like my toys. You want to go ahead and get started? Do you have any questions for me before I begin? Well, I wanted to let everyone know that we, this is live. We have Lauren in the chat, who's awesome, and Charles and Jordan. So I want to thank them. And I want to thank Valerie behind the camera on your end. Um, so if you guys have any questions, please put them in the chat. And I will be um, ready to ask them live on the show as we're going. So uh, yes, just please, if you have any questions, ask us. And yeah, so yeah. So I guess let's get started, Tim. Okay, great. So just for our viewers, just to let you know, I'm gonna talk about three machines today. I'm gonna to talk about briefly the DX2000. I'm gonna talk about our NX7, the Kire machine. And I'm gonna talk about our top of the line Coco Chi, the DX4000 QVP. Now, when you're shopping for a machine, there are some things you, as the user, want to make sure you are aware of in the models you're looking at. Maybe you've done some research or maybe you're relying on other people to provide you with information, which is fine, but I always want to stress that you're the user of that machine you're looking to purchase. And you want to know about the features that interest you because you're the one who's gonna be using the machine. Anybody can go and buy a machine, but you wanna buy one that has the features that you want. For example, on this DX2000, this has a button that you can raise and lower the presser foot on. So that means I don't have to reach behind to do it. I can use the button on the front of the machine. That's very time-saving for some people and quite easy because if I've got my hands full with fabric or something under the machine and I have to reach through the arm, guess what? I might shift that fabric before I'm ready to put the foot down, or it might get shifted arbitrarily, or maybe it slides out because I let go with the wrong hand. You know, we do make mistakes when we're doing things. So things like that are just nice and convenient to have that button on the front of the machine. Other thing I always try and stress with people looking at a machine is lighting on the machine. You know, in the old days, we used to have one little light over the needle bar. You remember those days, Barb? Uh, I remember I remember having to get extra lights because my machine didn't give enough light when sewing. So, yes, exactly. Now we have lighting over the sewing surface. But generally speaking, you know, midline and upper line machines are going to have multiple lights over the needle bar to give you that better lighting. We realize this in designing some of our machines that lighting is very important to the sewer. So that's one of the things you should be considering when you're purchasing a machine. How much light is on that machine? How much light do you need 
for the type of sewing you do. Do you sit in front of a window? Do you sit in the dark? Do you sew late at night? So these are all things that pertain to light coming from the machine or around the machine to make your sewing more enjoyable. Now, a couple of other things that I find that I always look for in a machine is what kind of threads can go onto the machine itself? You know, we always have a spool up at the top. Most machines have this vertical, I mean, this horizontal spool holder at the top of the machine. But that little well sometimes is smaller than what I can put a larger cone into. So for machines, some machines, you can get an optional thread stand to go on the back of the machine. Now, a lot of us, we buy an external one that goes on the side, but I kind of like the one that goes with the machine. That way I know I always have it when I have my machine and it's designed to fit my machine. Now I'm going to hold this back up again so you can see. This is a clip here and it slides into a holder on the back and I can put almost any size spool on here and use it effectively on my machine. That's very convenient. You know, there's another option or another a benefit of having that. My riser here, everybody can see this. It allows the thread to come off the spool and relax before it goes into the machine. We sometimes find threads give us a little problem going into the machine because this space here is so short. The threads aren't having enough time to relax. So by having an alternative spool off on the side, the thread can come up and travel into the machine, giving us extra time for the thread to relax a little bit for us. Remember, it's been tied up and cramped on that spool for a while. It wants to relax a little before you actually make it do some work for you. So those are just a couple of the features that I like on the DX2000. And this spool stand comes with the DX2000. It's not an option. So when you're looking at the machine, make sure you're looking for one that gives you the most value in your purchase of a machine it has to be important for value. A lot of times people talk about cost or price. The value of the machine is actually more than just the price. It is encompassing the features that you're looking for, like that needle, like the presser foot lift, like the spool stand, things like that that come with the machine that add extra value to it that can make your time with the machine more enjoyable. So one other thing I want to point out on our DX2000 is throat plate. Our throat plate on this machine has two stages, regular zigzag and a straight stitch. We simply throw a switch on the plate to convert it from zigzag mode or decorative stitch sewing mode to a straight stitch. The nice thing is you can't make a mistake. With the throat plate on this machine, when you engage that switch, guess what? It's not going to let you select anything but a straight stitch or a straight type of stitch that can be sewn with that system engaged. I can't accidentally touch a zigzag and then break a needle or damage my needle plate. There's a sensor inside, and that's what tells the machine that I've activated that, that uh, feature, so I cannot make a mistake. Very handy to me because a lot of times I get carried away. I get so excited doing something. And I forgot that I put the straight stitch plate on. The machine didn't have a sensor. And I went and said, oh, decorative stitch time. Boom. And then, of course, you know, I, now I have a nick in the plate. I have a broken needle and not really feeling very smart about myself. But with that sensor system, the machine will save me from making that, that uh, terrible, terrible mistake. So that gives us an idea of what to kind of look for when you're talking about basic features in a machine. Now, there's a whole myriad of features you should really be looking for. Those are the features that you as a sewer or as a crafter or a seamstress, you should be making a list of what's important to you in buying that new machine. Not just what the dealer tells you, not just what the salesperson tells you. I might find some features to be the cat's meow, and you may think they are nothing. You need to look for the features that are important for you. So we're going to talk about those as we step up to our next level of machine. So Barbara, if you would give me a moment here, I would like to be able to rearrange my set for a moment and we'll go to the next model so we can take a look at some actually very interesting and some nice fancy features. Sure thing, Tim. And so I'm going to mute you real quick. Just give me a thumbs up when you're ready to go. Let's go ahead and look at some of the comments that have come through so far. So if you're just joining in, don't forget to comment hashtag all brands. We're doing a contest at the end of this broadcast and you just may win a $50 allbrands.com e-gift card to use on our website. Uh, so can, uh, <laughs> good luck. All right. Uh, so let's bring in Tim. I'm going to unmute you, Tim. Uh, and we'll answer some questions. All right. Let's go to the comments here. Oh, look, Steve says, Steve and Norma want a Juki eventually. I can tell you, I 
have the Juki TL 2010 uh, for piecing and some free motion quilting. I absolutely love that machine. And uh, these machines are like that, but just more features. So I'm sure that, um, that this broadcast will be very beneficial uh, to you. Okay. Uh, oh, we have a new viewer, Mikso. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Uh, welcome to the All Brand Show Club. And we hope that you uh, join us each Thursday uh, for our live broadcast. And if you haven't yet, please uh, follow us on Facebook. We're allbrands.com. We also have a forum group on Facebook called So Forum. Uh, where you can ask questions, post projects, and be notified of videos like this as well. Um, also, you can follow us on YouTube. So if you're watching on YouTube, please click the bell below. All right. So we have more questions. Uh, Tim, can I bring you in? Sure. Go ahead. They're going to see my machine rather than seeing me because it's much more attractive than I am. So um, let's answer some questions. <laughs> uh, debatable. But that is a very nice machine. Okay, let's see. Does this, uh, the, this was a question for the previous machine, the DX2000. Does that have a knee lift? Yes. Actually, all of our, well, most of our midline machines and up all come with a knee lift. Okay. Believe yeah. it or not. I know that's kind of weird, but most of our machines come with a knee lift. Also, at the same time, most of our machines in that same midline and upper line all come with an extension table. Those two so if, things are so important for quilters. Yes. Well, actually, for garment sewing, I was working on a long jacket, and I found that extra table surface to be very handy. You know, a, a full-length jacket, 72 inches long, is a lot of fabric to be working with. Yeah, I agree. When you're going around tight curves and you want to keep your hands on the material, being able to lift the foot with your knee is my favorite feature on a sewing machine. Um, let's see. We just have a few folks that are just saying that they love their Juki. I wanted to make sure that we highlighted those comments. Um, here's another one from Cindy. She says she loves her Juki and she's even saving money for a new machine. So I hope you're inspired uh, by this video. Uh, here's another one. Walk by faith. I see a Juki in my future. Yes. Uh, here's, okay, here's a good question from Diana, which... I guess I'll ask it now. Which of the models being shown has the largest throat space? Actually, the model we're going to look at now, the Kire, and our top of the line, the Coco Chi, they both have a 12-inch throat space. Yes, and that's so important when you have a big quilt or a lot of fabric that you're working with, and you're like on the other side of it, <laughs> you know, or going towards the middle, and you're like having to scrunch all that fabric up. If you just have a standard machine that has an opening this big, that's going to be nearly impossible. But with this huge area, it's just so easy. So now our um, standard machine, our DX2000, it has an eight inch throat space. So you keep in mind that's a little bit larger than the throat spaces of, you know, 15 years ago when the average was about seven and seven and an eighth. So we actually have grown up our sewing machines over the years across the industry. So a lot of companies today are starting at that eight inch throat space and going up from there. We just don't have too much in between. We have the one for the nice size, easy to use, comfortable to sew at, eight inch throat space, and then a 12 inch throat space for those that want that larger throat space and, and can handle those bigger objects. There are some other advantages to having the 12 inch throat space other than just the size. And we'll talk about those in a minute. Got any more questions, Barbara? Uh, yeah, here's a really good question from Julie who watches a lot. And it's good to see you again, Julie. She said she just joined in. She's interested in Juki, but she doesn't have any dealers close to her. Well, all of these machines you can actually purchase from our website, Julie, and we'd be happy to help you um, afterwards. Um, so let's see. Uh, here's another one. Do any of these machines have adjustable foot height? Yes. Okay. Actually, the <laughs> has adjustable foot height for pivot position and for free motion quilting or the floating function on it. Our Kire and X7 and our Coco Chi have fully adjustable foot heights for several purposes, and the adjustments are much, much more succinct. And then instead of having like a half millimeter option, you have micro options in between. Here's a really good question from Julie. 
NASA. She says, which Juki would be great for making bags using faux leather, cork, or even thicker material? Believe it or not, most people go to our go-to workhorse machine, our TL2010 or our TL18 QVP, because they are the semi-professional models. But I'm going to tell you, our Kire and our Coco Chi will sew through just about anything. I was very surprised. I ran eight layers of denim through one as a show just to see what it would do. And I was very pleased with it. It was just as smooth as our TL machine. Yeah. It's kind of amazing that we always go to one machine, but we never jump to the other ones. But now that I've tested the other ones and I'm going, oh, you know what? You could actually sew cork and denim and leather on our 12 inch throat machines because they have that extra power to handle it. That's wonderful. Yeah, I, I tend to think like when you have a TL 2010Q, which is like one of the most popular uh, professional machines um, by Juki, I think, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but that's in my mind the most popular one that I see everywhere. Um, these machines um, are, are like that, but they just have the other um, stitches on them. So when, when you have the TL2010, it's straight stitch only. Um, so you typically have to have a secondary machine that has all of the different stitches if you want to do a buttonhole or anything like that. So this is like the TL2010, but it adds all of the other amazing sewing features to it. Great questions. All right. Uh, we have some more. We'll get back to those. Uh, here's one more. Does it have a magnifier yes all of our machines have the availability of having a magnifier attached to them depending on the model depends on the magnifier you order so that actually the magnifier that fits onto our nx7 is different than the magnifier that fits onto our dx4000 model the dx2000 and the dx4000 actually share some of those common accessories okay great Oh man, we have more questions. We'll get to them, but I wanted Tim to show a little bit about this machine um, before that. So Tim, take it away. All right. So let's talk about what used to be my favorite machine. And I still really like this machine because of that 12 inch throat space. But I also like it for a myriad of other reasons. Number one, it's so, so smooth. that it just hums along. I'm not gonna say they're whisper quiet, but they're pretty quiet for a large sewing machine. The other nice thing about it is the fact that it has a myriad of stitches built in. And of course, for the utility sewer, the garment sewer, nothing's more important than having the right set of utility stitches and of course, buttonholes. So there's a good assortment of buttonhole patterns in here. But some of us like to sew some decorative, so there's a good assortment of decorative stitches in here. So they're viewed on the lid, but they're also accessible on the screen over here. But before we get to that, I wanna talk about some features over on this end of the machine that you're gonna find probably kind of interesting. One of them, I'm gonna show you a video, an animation about it later on, but this particular machine, this NX7, is our first machine to have smart feed. This is an integrated feeding system that is attached to the back of the machine and to turn it on, you simply pull it down and lock it into place. Once you've turned it on and locked it into place, you can adjust it, which means you have two layers of fabric. You have a bottom layer and a top layer. And I want that feeding to be a little bit more pulling on the top layer. So I can adjust that feeding system so it grabs a little bit more on the top. You know, we talk about matching plaids or matching prints on the seam of a skirt that's very long. We always have a tendency to want to start a little early on the top piece so that we can accommodate that push of the fabric. Well, with the smart feed, I don't need to do that because the smart feed is going to grab both layers and pull them through the machine. Now you're going, oh, it's probably just like a walking foot. But let me explain the difference between the smart feed and a walking foot. Smart feed, number one, is on a sensor. It knows when it's engaged and you can adjust it. And it's powered, which means it actually will move itself by the power of the machine to help move the fabric through. A walking foot is passive, which means the feed dogs coming up are pressing against the feed dogs on the walking foot. That's where the power is coming through to move the fabric through. The feed dogs underneath are brushing or pulling the upper feed dogs with it. So when you want that perfect positive feed, anything that's powered on the top, like our smart feed system, is going to give you that nice, even feeding capabilities. But sometimes the fabric on the top slips, satin, organza, things like that that I need to make a little adjustment for, I have that sensor adjustment that I can make. So it's going to continuously feed that fabric for me without having a hiccup 
or a glitch or push or bubble. There's nothing worse than having a bubble in your seam when you've gotten all the way down and you're in the last six or seven inches. And all of a sudden you have this little bubble on the top fabric. That's easily avoided with the smart feed system. So that's one nice thing about this machine. Well, I said there were several, but I really like that because I can use that for my quilting as well. I generally refer to garment sewing and things like that when I talk about it, but I can also use it if I want to channel quilt or I'm putting the binding on. I'm all done with my quilt. I had it freshly quilted or maybe I quilted it myself and I put the binding on. That smart feed will help you put the binding on much smoother, much cleaner because it's going to move all the layers through the machine nice and cleanly. One other thing about this machine is buttons are located right here in the front for you. So everything is nice and convenient location wise, your speed control, your start, stop, block stitch, reverse stitch, all of these are very conveniently located. Some of the machines that you see on the market, they have controls over here. I like them all to be concise, right where my fingers are, because I'm working in this area. So having them right up here is very convenient for me. Once again, you notice that there's lighting over the needle bar and there's lighting over the sewing surface. There's open space in here. That's very important. Again, remember, we talked about on our previous machine, we talked about lighting being that, that, uh, that feature that most people kind of overlook, but you need to be aware of it because of where you're going to place your machine. This machine has lots of space and lots of lighting in it. The nice white matte finish is not going to give you a little bit of a glare that some of the other machines will do. So it's really great to have this extra lighting uh, on the area for us. Now, I am going to talk about one other feature over here. And once again, I'm going to show you a video on this later on. But I mentioned on the DX2000, the throat plate had a switch in it. On our NX7 and our GX4000, we actually change out the throat plate. I know Barbara's probably sitting in the background rolling her eyes going, change the throat plate? No, I know about this and I'm hooting and hollering. Woo! I love this feature. <laughs> so there's no screws in the, in the throat plate to take the plate off. We simply pry it off. We pop out the feed dogs. Yes, we actually will remove the feed dogs once again. I'll only use a screwdriver to pop them out. And I'll show you this in a video a little while later. But we change out the feed dogs from our regular feed dogs to our professional style feed dogs. They look almost exactly like the feed dogs on our TL2010 and TL18 models. Now, why do we do that? Because we want the feed dogs to be closer together, giving us that straight stitch opening so that we have better control. We have more control when our feed dogs are closer together around the needle than we do if we left them wide and still had a straight stitch with that opening in it. So we change the plate out and we change the feed dogs out to that professional style. But we also change the foot because the foot is narrower. So if those of you are familiar with our TL model machines or a straight stitch only machine, you know how narrow the foot is on those machines. We have that same foot for our NX7 and for our uh, Coco Chi. So here we're gonna change the foot out, but that's not good enough. I can still use my smart feed system with it. So I'm not giving up that extra function just because I went to straight stitch mode on that machine. So that's another nice feature I happen to like at this end of the machine. Very convenient. It also yeah. makes me open it up, take a look inside to see if I've been lazy and if I need to do a little dusting in there. Because you know what? I am actually a lazy sewer. Anything the machine can do for me, I am more than happy to let it do it. But maintenance is one of those things the machines don't automatically do. I still have to do that myself. Hey, so, Tim. Barbara, we're going to zoom in on the informational okay. display over here in just a second. While we do that, I want to come in because I'm super excited. I'm familiar with this machine. I love it. We're getting some questions about um, the feet that come with this machine. I don't know if you have that handy with you, um, but several of the feet that come with this machine have the cutout in the back so that you can use your integrated dual feed while you're using that specific foot function, which I think is amazing. So this is a thank you, Marge, for asking that question. So, you know, Barbara, I pulled up the foot pack just so we could take a quick look at it here. And it's a good thing because I think we're zoomed in on it. I might have to hold oh, it up a little bit more so perfect. you can see it. But you were talking about that opening in the back. So let me pull out one of these feet here and see if I can put my thumb behind it or hold it in my hand. Maybe I can put it to the white. Mm. Can you see it there? So yes. you see the opening in the back of the foot? That tells me this foot can be used with our smart feed system. So I'm not having to use, I'm not limited as to one or two feet. Now I did mention that straight stitch foot, right? 
Does this look kind of familiar, Barb? Oh, yeah, that's my favorite TL2010 or TL18 QVP foot. Exactly. And you see the opening in the back so I can still use my smart feed with it. Wonderful. Now, I'm just giving you a quick preview here, but this is the foot pack and the straight stitch plate and our sensor buttonhole that actually come with the NX7. So all and of this is included with the machine. Yeah. And there's, a, there's another set of feed dogs as well, correct? They are hiding in this little well right here. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see them well enough. Yep. And that gives they, you the, the straight stitch feed dogs. Exactly. You see how narrow they are and they look, if you know what the TL feed dogs look like, they look virtually exactly like them. I love it. Thank you, Tim. All right. So we're gonna look at the screen now and we're gonna talk about some of the features on the screen. So two knobs on the screen. We like to keep knobs on our machines because people relate to the knobs for adjustments. So we kind of keep those on most of our machines. Even on our top of the line Coco G, we still have some knobs. Some people find it easier than using the touch screen to make certain adjustments. So the knobs allow us those adjustments. But this particular machine breaks down the screen into areas that you would be setting things or choosing things. So on this the left side over here, this is where I would do my settings. So I would set my presser foot pressure. I would set my thread tension if I need to make an adjustment. I would set for my lock stitch to be a single stitch place or four stitches forward and four stitches back, that normal reverse one. I can choose that for the beginning and choose a separate one for the end. They don't have to be the same on this machine. I can also turn on to have it automatically cut the thread at the end and lift the foot off. Remember, I told you I was a lazy sewer, so anything the machine can do for me, I'm more than happy to have it do it. Here it's going to show me the stitch pattern that I've got set to sew. If I select another stitch pattern, it's going to display for me, and it's also going to tell me which foot I should be using. I get lots of information from this display, so I don't have to have any guesswork. Once again, we're back to that, I'm a lazy sewer. The more the machine does, the happier I am. But you know what? Sometimes I don't want to look at the lid. I want to look at the screen and the stitch patterns so I can kind of browse through them so I can see what they actually look like in a little better picture on the screen. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab one of these. And I'm going to close my window down because now you can see that I have selected an offset zigzag. It's set to one side. I don't know if you can see this on the, on the screen or not, but there's a little gold dot at the top of the stitch. Can you see that, Barb? Uh, if I squint, yeah, I can see it. <laughs> Otherwise, I can okay. use my imagination. <laughs> you know what that little dot represents? That represents the needle position. So as the pattern sews, it's going to flow through the display. And wherever the needle is falling at the other end of the machine, it's going to be displayed here so I know exactly where the needle is. If I need to stop at a particular position on a pattern, I can just sew to that point and I can see exactly where the needle is. And I can take my foot off the pedal and have it stop right there for me. I find that feature to be very handy when I'm playing with some of my decorative stitches and I'm trying to get right to the end of the garment or right to a seam that I want to stop at or I want to stop the pattern at a particular point. It's very handy to be able to look here rather than having to look at the needle, which sometimes you can't see because the foot is in the way. Here I can look exactly on, I can see exactly on the screen that particular needle placement. So along with the needle placement, I can actually adjust the needling position. So over on my right side, I have stitch width control, I have needle position, and I have stitch length control. So as I adjust my stitch width, that pattern, you see it's growing, it's getting wider, right? Well, if I have a pattern that is anchored to the left or to the right, I can touch the button and now I can move that pattern. This pattern is not anchored on the left or right, it's a predetermined set pattern. So if I come over to my regular needle, I can move my needle left or right. But you know what? Applicate people really like to have availability to position their applique. So I'm going to make this applique a little smaller. See, that's not anchored. That's a width adjustment, adjusting both sides. See how it moves the back line? Well, if I have one that's anchored, it's not going to move the back line for me. Ah. See? Oh, but you know what? I like to sew using the edge of the foot, so I need to move this pattern over. 
So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to touch the placement of my needle. And you see, I've now moved the entire pattern over to the side so I can guide along the inside edge of my foot for an easier guide mark than trying to float it down the middle of the, of the presser foot. I still have pattern width control, so I can still make it narrow, or I can make it as wide as the machine will handle. But you see, my backstitch line on my applique is staying in place. So that's a very cool feature that we don't have on some of our other machines, but we have it on the on our top two models here. I know that a couple of applicators that I know, they really like that feature. They start sewing, they need to make an adjustment, they don't have to worry about the needle position changing when they're making it narrower or wider on the, on the jumps portion of the stitch. So that's a very nice feature to have built into your machine. Now, remember, I said I'm lazy. You know, I keep going back to that because I want the machine to do things for me. So I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to grab my straight stitch. Now, my straight stitch, regular straight stitch, 2.4, 2.5, 2.6, depending on the, on the machine model and brand, is going to be your default straight stitch stitch length. Automatic tensions is going to automatically set the tension for you. But what happens if you make a change to the stitch length? Does the machine need to adjust the tension for you? Does your machine adjust the tension for you? So if I come over here and I adjust my stitch length, see I'm making it smaller, and I look at my tension window over here, this machine will adjust the tension for me because I've made my stitch length smaller. I went from that 2.4 down to a 1.5. It says, oh, we need to adjust the tension to you. So it's a little bit more intuitive than just automatic tensions, where basically automatic tensions are set for the stitch pattern. This says, oh, I have a base starting point for the stitch pattern, but the user's made a change. I need to make an adjustment. I find that very helpful when I'm trying to do some sewing, especially with some of the decorative stitches, and I'm using some decorative threads. Do you like that feature, Barb? I love that feature. Hey, we have a question from Veronica Williams. She says, what about decorative stitches? And I see that there's another tab at the top. How many stitches and, and what do they look like? Oh, wow. Are those full categories of stitches? Those are the categories for our stitches. And I've only just touched on some of the decorative ones. Inside each one of these folders is a myriad by type. So if I wanted to find a particular type of stitch, I like satin stitch, or maybe I like something that's a little bit more lacy, I can come in and grab different stitches. But you know what? Remember, I can explode out that window so I can see everything within one or two frames rather than trying to look at that smaller selection. So I'm going to come back up here because this particular group, it tells me that my smart feed is engaged and I cannot sew that pattern with the smart feed. I told you I'm lazy. Guess what? The machine just saved me a whole lot of headache. So we can come back over to our group. We can grab another group. We can scroll through the groups. We can do all sorts of things that we want to find in here. Satin stitches. Do you like satin stitches, Barb? Oh, I, yes. I love satin. Well, those are my myriad of satin stitches. Now, satin stitches are only good if you can do what with them? Make them really wide. Make them wider, but how about elongate them? And long. Yes. So I have, we have the availability to elongate our satin stitches. So that satin stitch might be a default of eight millimeters from the one point to the other point, but we can make it 10 millimeters or 12 millimeters. We can actually double, triple the, the size of it in some instances. So that's a nice feature to have on elongation because you're not changing the stitch length. You're actually adding stitches to make the pattern itself longer. That's a big difference when you go to adjust a satin stitch. Am I just making the stitches longer, which means I'm going to gap them? Or if I elongate it, it's adding more stitches to the pattern to make the pattern itself longer. That is the beauty of having a computerized machine. I love exactly. it. Exactly. And I will tell you, once you go to a computerized machine and you get used to the features, it's very hard to go back to a mechanical machine. <laughs> what, you didn't press the button and everything is automatically set and ready to go? <laughs> I wish it was. You know, I, I have to stop and think when I sew on my, my TL2020 because I have to do the tensions and I have to change the foot and I have to, you know, so it's like, okay, I have to stop and rethink a little bit. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm good. Now I can sit and sew. But yeah. when I sit down to one of the other machines, 
and everything takes care of it, it's so much easier to just let the machine do the hard work for you. I don't have to stop and think. I can actually enjoy my time sewing at the machine. Yeah. So this is an amazing machine for sewers, of um, garment sewers or craft sewers. Um, but there is a lot of quilters that actually love this machine. And Nilda is asking, how about those quilting stitches? <laughs> I'm glad you asked because that's one of the things that I was going to talk about next. And it's a perfect question to ask because I'm going to go in here and show you why I like our quilting stitches. And I'm going to refer back to our foot. Actually, we have two quilting feet for your piecing pleasure that come with the machine. I know you're going to go, what? Two feet? Why do I need two feet? I have two quarter inch feet. So the first one is the regular quarter inch foot no guide center needle i can still use smart feet all right Perfect. so this is a center needle which means that if i just select stitch pattern number one as a center needle it's actually going to give me garment sewing length and i need to adjust my stitch length because the default is going to be up at 2.4 2.5 and i need to be at like 1.8 or 2.0 if i'm doing paper piecing i like to be about 1.6 because then my paper rips easier so if i'm at center needle I need to make sure I'm adjusting my stitch length for my piecing. Got it. Okay. So that's without a guide. But some people like a guide. So we also have a quarter inch foot. My favorite foot. That's my favorite foot. Look. Smart feet. And yes. We, we're not giving up on the smart feet. We want to be able to use it as much as possible. Now, I'm going to tell you about a particular stitch in this machine. And that's stitch pattern number three. So now if you look at the display, you see stitch pattern number three, my needle is moved over. It's not recommending anything but an A foot. That's my standard foot. I'm not using my piecing foot. I'm not using with a quarter inch foot. I'm using my A foot. That's my standard foot. And I stress this for two reasons, which I'm gonna talk about in just a second. But the other thing is the stitch length is already set. It's already shorter for me. And the machine has adjusted the tensions to accommodate that shorter stitch length already. So all I have to do is sit and sew. But I want to talk about the benefits of using the quarter inch foot, I mean the quarter inch stitch as opposed to using the quarter inch foot. Now I'm going to pull this foot back over here. I put it over there, but I'm going to bring it back over here. If you can see this foot, you see that it's narrow in the front and then it's a little wider in the back, right? Mm-hmm. So this front edge here is where I guide to get my quarter inch to the center needle. But my right hand feed dogs aren't hitting my fabric. If I put this and I put any quarter inch foot on the machine and I look at it, my right hand feed dogs are exposed because the edge of that quarter inch is inside that on a seven millimeter machine. Well, if I use my quarter inch built in piecing stitch, and my A foot, I'm using the edge of the A foot as my guide. So I'm not using the guide here. I'm using a guide out here. I'm not using the guide here. I'm using a guide out here on my A foot, which means I'm using all my feed dogs. Well, you know me, Barbara. I like a good little joke with it. So I paid for all my feed dogs. I'm going to use them. So there's my joke <laughs> today for you. Feed dogs are very important. So feed dogs, for those of you who don't know, are uh, what pulls your fabric backwards. So the needle never moves on your machine. It's the fabric that's being pulled backwards um, and at the rate that it's being pulled backwards. So they're very important. Now, the other thing with our feed dogs is all of our systems that I've shown you today and most of our other midline and upper line sewing machines have a box feeding system, which means the feed dogs come up, they pull the fabric to the rear of the machine, and then they drop down, and then they come back to the front of the machine. They're not an elliptical movement like older, older models. They are a true box feed. That is a feature we brought in from our industrial machines. So that's a nice positive movement of your fabric with the quarter inch piecing stitch and your A foot. You're not gonna get those little wiggles. That's one of the things I always found when I used my quarter inch foot was my fabric would do a little wiggle as it traveled through the machine because one long feed dog was hitting it and then the helper feed dogs in the middle were hitting it, but nothing really on the other side of the needle was hitting the fabric to help move it through. So that's why I've gone to using the quarter inch stitch built into the machine and the A foot, much more positive movement and my seams come out much smoother. 
as you get more comfortable using that, you'll also find you'll sew faster. Oh. So, so Barb, do we have any questions about, about this machine so far? We do. So let me um, come in and we will, uh, I will ask and you can help me answer. How about that? Oh, sure. <laughs> Here's one from Nilda. She asks, are they low or high shank? So that question is the, uh, the shank of the machine is where the uh, foot is connected. And if it's like the measurement between the, um, the screw that screws the shank on to the bottom, correct? And there's taller ones or shorter ones? Okay, so basically you are correct. There's a high shank and a low shank. Our 12 inch throat machines like our Kira and our Kokichi are high shank machines. All of our other machines, the DX models, the F models, the G models, they are all low shank machines. Now that doesn't mean that, that snap on feet are not interchangeable. A lot of snap on feet are interchangeable between the high shank and the low shank. The difference is those feet that you have to take a screwdriver and take off the ankle to put the foot on, those are the feet that make a difference as to whether it being a high shank or a low shank. But let me tell you a little secret. We actually have an ankle adapter for this machine. So the Kira machine, you can buy an ankle adapter and run low shank feet. Oh. So if you found a foot that you like that wasn't you know, a regular foot for the machine, but you found out that it worked on the machine, but it was only came in low shank, you could purchase the ankle adapter to make the machine a low shank and work with that foot. Great question, Nilda. And Excellent answer, Tim. I didn't know that. That's wonderful. Um, that's really great to hear. Um, I am not sure about this one. Uh, Nilda asks again, she says, do they have precision mode? I'm not familiar with that. That's not a term I've heard of uh, on the sewing machines in, in our models. Okay. Uh, maybe if she could give you a little bit more explanation of it, we might be able to see exactly what it would compare to in our machines. Okay. Uh, yeah. So Nilda, just uh, clarify that for us if you could. Okay. Here is one from Diana. She says, how much does this and the Coco, which is K-O-K-O -K -O machine, Coco Chi, so the Kyrie and the Coco Chi weigh? Okay. So each of these machines for shipping weigh almost 50 pounds. They're not lightweight machines. Out of the box, they weigh in at about 38 and 39 pounds respectively. So That's they a good do part. have some weight to them. Mm -hmm. Which you want I, in a professional machine. Exactly. I, mm -hmm. I do know people, I actually travel with one. So I put it in a wheel bag and I travel with the Coco Chi. I just take it in and out of the truck, but you know, I'm a guy and it's not that big of a deal, but I do know some women who do travel with them. They kind of struggle with them sometimes, but otherwise they're like, nope, that's the machine I'm taking with me. That's the machine I want to sew on. You know what? They're putting it in the car and they're taking it with them. And I don't blame them. Once you start sewing on some of these big machines, you are like, why do I want to sew on that little machine? Except if I really have to. And that's why you want to have a second machine if you're not comfortable carrying around a big machine. And yeah. don't think that that little machine is going to be any less of a sewing machine. You still need to shop the features and benefits on it for you as the sewer. Of course. Of course. Here's a good question from Brenda. Looks like she's doing some pretty heavy, thick material. Um, she asks, my husband wants a machine to do belts and wallets, leather work. For which one is that? With a walking foot? Uh, my first um, answer would maybe to look into the industrial line. But what do you think, Tim? Okay. Actually, we just had this question at a show I was at last week where the lady was actually looking for the same thing. Her husband wants to do wallets and belts, mostly belts. And, of course, you know, our household machines will sew household leather, things for garments, yeah. not necessarily belts. I probably could sew a leather belt on my Coco Chi or my Kira. I don't think I'd want to do it all the time. I think I would prefer having a machine designed to sew leather that you know is going to be able to take the abuse. Once you start sewing leather, it can become addictive. And the advantage to having that heavier industrial machine for it is a big plus. So I would probably recommend going to an industrial machine that is designed to handle leather. 
Yeah, which Juki makes great industrial machines. So, and All Brands carries those as well. So, uh, just let us know, uh, and we'll if you're interested, and we'll help you out in picking one out. Good question, Brenda. All right, I think that's all we have for now. Let me just double check. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Uh, I think we can. I think we can go go forward now. All right. So <laughs> all right. So let's talk about one more thing. And this is the, the important things that we talked about before. If I can get a little zoom out on the machine so I can look at the other side of it. There we go. So this is our free arm. So on the Cure, we do not make an accessory tray because this machine comes with that nice accessory box that I showed you with the feet in it. And it comes with the extension table. So I don't want you to think our extension tables are small. I hope this is going to fit into the, the frame so you can see it. But this gives you that nice sewing surface. This is actually pretty much our standard size table for all of our machines, whether it's an F, a DX, an NX. Even our TL machines have a table like this with that same kind of size. So it's about 24 inches, 22 and a half, 24 inches long, and it just fits onto the end of the machine to give you that nice sewing surface and it matches the cut of the machine exactly. So it's gonna be a seamless extension table for you. So that's a very nice feature to have. Remember, it comes with the machine, you don't have to buy it extra. All right, so Barb, I'm gonna switch machines. So if you'll put me backstage again, I will switch machines and we can jump into something a little bit more interesting. Oh, I wonder what that is. And don't forget everyone, uh, Tim has, did you announce that you have a surprise for us already. <laughs> um, so uh, Tim has a surprise for us at the end of this video. And we're also, uh, All Brands has a giveaway. So if you haven't done it already, please comment hashtag All Brands and you will be eligible to win a gift card uh, for All Brands at the end of this broadcast. Mm -hmm. So please uh, do that. And also if, this video is helpful for you and you want to be notified in the future when we go live, please hit the subscribe button below um, so that we can uh, notify you when there's new sewing instructional videos that come out and uh, just give you as much education as we can. Um, also, if you're on Facebook, follow us there. So uh, we would love to have you join our group. Oh, Barbara says she loves sewing surprises. Me too. And we have some more questions coming in, so we'll get to those very shortly. But I'll bring in Tim whenever he's ready. I think he's ready. Tim, you ready to go? Oh, let's see. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Tim. All right, so I'm going to talk about the DX4000, the Coco Chi. Now, I always loved my NX7, and it was just as smooth and as easy to use, but then they introduced the Coco Chi. Well, you know what machine got replaced in my little collection of, of machines I have. So the NX7 went away, and the Coco Chi took its place. So people are like, well, why did you change machines? Well, remember, I'm lazy. This machine does more for me than the NX7 does. So I wanted those extra features just to make my sewing a little bit more enjoyable. And so we're going to talk about those features, but I'm also going to talk about things that are really different on the machine, which we're going to zoom in and take a look at the screen. I think you're going to be amazed at it. So first, we're going to start with the regular side of the machine. I'm not giving up any features, first of all. I want to let you know. Same throat plate. Same smart feed system. I'm not giving those up. I have to have those features. They're important to me. So I'm not giving those up by coming from the NX7 to the Coco Chi. I get to keep those. I get to keep my cluster of buttons right here at, the, at my close to my hand area because that's important to me. I don't like buttons over here that I have to reach over. I like everything right here for me. I always sew with a foot pedal, but some people like to sew with a start stop button. Me. I prefer the foot pedal. I just feel I have better control. I don't have to take my hand off to hit the button. Some people get very well coordinated with the buttons. I don't. I have this two-handed opposing 
problem. They, they don't want to go together. They're always going to go their own little paths. So for me, the foot control is better. Now, I didn't talk about the foot control previously, but I'm going to talk about it now. And I'm going to show you what the difference is. If you know our old foot controls, they didn't have two switches. We had a blue dot and a heel on our previous generation's uh, foot controls. You would press it down to make it go and you would activate the cutter or options on the other side. Well, this is to make it go and these side, the small switch on the side is now programmable for one of seven options. Yes, seven options. You can pick the option you'd like to use and change it anytime you'd like. For example, I might be wanting to use the needle, the, the pressure foot lift. So I can program pressure foot lift onto that button. So when I stop sewing, I move my foot over, I press it, it'll lift the foot up for me. Maybe on another one, I want to use needle up, needle down. So I don't have to take my hands off the fabric and use the button up here. I can use my foot to trigger needle up, needle down. So those features are really nice, convenient to be able to program into the foot switch. And because you can change them at any time, you're not stuck with it. You can play with them and find the one that you use the most. You might find that you use two or three of them. Or you might find you use none of them. I find I use none of them. Remember, I'm lazy. Anything the machine can do for me. So I just kind of ignore this. I use just the pedal for it. But a lot of people like the advantage of having that second switch. This machine does have the accessory tray. Nice feature. Now, this accessory tray is a little tricky for new, new, uh, new owners because they always think it's something strange. And it is because you push it out to open it. The doors actually have a tiny latch on them. So that should you pull it off, and I have done this before, I pulled it off and accidentally knocked it onto the floor, it didn't open up on me and all my feet go everywhere. That's oh, very convenient. That to hasn't happened feet. to me yet, Tim. I can't imagine. <laughs> I would not want that to happen to me. I'm waiting for a latch for my box. <laughs> I usually drop the box. <laughs> but you see, it's the same style of box, except this time it's pretty jukey blue inside. And a full assortment of feet like our Kire machine. So you can leave the feet in here or you can put them into the tray. The tray does have assigned slots. They're not just a well in the front. You put the feet into the matching shape so they get keep organized. The backside is actually just a dumping well. You can just dump anything you want into it. There's no assigned spots for it. So it's actually very flexible uh, accessory tray to use. Organized in the front, kind of a free-for-all in the back. Tim, can I hop in? Sure. Has has anybody seen the, I think it was like a viral post on a lot of sewing channels where they're like, what is this little thing for? And then they had a picture of a bunch of candy inside. So just, uh, just one idea for everybody. You can, you can stash candy back there. <laughs> Tim's well, like, maybe well, sewing I, stuff. Or you can stash mini bottles, but I didn't say that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so. Keeping in mind, I like all my features for my Kire. I am able to keep them here. Okay, like I said, the throat plate, the button arrangements, but this is where we're gonna make some changes is in our display screen over here. So give me just a second, and we're going to reshift our focus onto the screen because I think it's kind of important for you to be able to see the screen and to understand what's happening on it. Here I am. That's a very nice full size screen that he has there. Um, so uh, yes, here it is. Okay, so on the Kire, I talked about certain features being off on the side. Well, here the features are all around your stitch pattern. So I talked about the lock stitch function. So I can turn on the lock stitch here at the beginning and I can choose just by touching the screen which one I want. So right now there's no blue dot. I've turned off the lock stitch at the beginning. If I want the forward to back four stitches, I now have four stitches forward, four stitches back, and then it will sew down the seam for me. Oh, I want micro stitch or where they stitch in place. So that's my option. Just at the touch of a button. I don't need to turn the feature on or off. It's on all the time. I just tell it which one I want. Here at the bottom is where I can tell it where I want it to end. How do I want it to end? Lock stitch or no lock stitch. Or do I want it to give me those four reverse stitches and the four forward stitches and then stop? But remember, I'm lazy. 
I want it to cut the thread and I want it to lift the presser foot at the end. So I've got those two features turned on also. So now it'll lock stitch at the beginning. It'll sew down to the seam. When I get to the end of my seam, I'm going to come over and touch my lock stitch button on the other side of the machine. And then I'm going to wait because the machine will lock stitch, cut the thread and lift the foot off. I can slide that piece of fabric out, slide my next piece of fabric under and start sewing again. Automation makes it easy. And that's the easiest way to get them set is just right here on the main screen. Now, Barbara, you might be able to see this a little better on this screen. Here in my stitch pattern, there's a circle in the middle. I hope you can see that. Could barely see that gold dot on the other screen. But here, there's a circle instead of that gold dot. So that circle is what tracks the stitch pattern. That's kind of an improvement. If you can't see that little gold dot, now you can see the circle. So it's going to track for us. But wait. I need still need to be able to do what? Adjust my stitch length and stitch width and things like that. That's where I have extra items to touch on the screen. So I'm going to come down here to my needle position. Now, this is a very cool feature to me because I can use the knob here. Some people like the knob. Remember, we talked about this earlier, but I like the touch screen. And to me, I like to be able to sweep the arc. So you can see I moved my needle all the way to the right. I do have a touch to make it go all the way to the left or to the right, but I can use this arc on the touch screen or I can use the knob. So we give you options on how to make adjustments to your stitch pattern or your pattern placement in the sewing area. Kind of like that feature, Barb? I love that feature. Guess what? What? This length is right here. It's got a knob dedicated to it. So I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to reselect my stitch pattern so it goes back to the default setting. So it's center needle, but my stitch length is 2.4. And over on the other side here, I don't know if you can see it, but the thread tension says 0.0. .0. That's kind of odd, don't you think? Most mm. tensions have a number, three, four, five, something like that, right? Yeah. We start at zero as our default numeric value. So we're not afraid to have a negative number. A negative number means I'm lightening up my upper thread tension. Mm. But just to tell you what the number is, isn't good enough. Our machine has a display for thread tension adjustments. So you can see here the blue line represents our upper thread. The gray line represents your bobbin thread. If I make an adjustment, either by sweeping it or by using the knob, that diagram is going to change. So if I increase my upper thread tension, you see how it's pulling up the gray thread? I love so visuals. It's letting you visualize it, letting you visually see what the change is before you even have to sew. Did I go the right way? Oh no, that was the wrong way. I need to go the other way and let my bobbin thread pull my top thread down a little bit more because maybe my bobbin thread was coming up too much. So I can see here on the display before I even sew if I've made the correct directional change up or down on my upper thread tension. Now, I told you I like that arc, right? Oh, how cool is that? So that's my that's one of the reasons why I went to this machine, because I like the interface. To me, it's a little cleaner. It's a little bit more fun to play with. And I can make these adjustments. So I want to get back to the default. The default is zero, 00 because I'm on a regular straight stitch. So I'm going to touch a blank portion of the screen. It takes me back to my working screen. But I want to make my stitch length a little shorter. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to adjust my stitch length. And you see, I've now made it 2.0. And if you can see here, I'm going to bring up my thread tension again. You can see it's adjusted my thread tension to negative 1.5. Because the machine smarter than I am, it says, oh, you made the stitch length shorter. We need to make a tension adjustment. So it's made that adjustment for me. I didn't change the stitch pattern. I just altered it. So now I want to change my stitch pattern. Touch the number at the top. Now here's where we're going to be really cool, Barbara, because you're going to like this. I have headers across the top, which I can sweep left or right through the headers to each one of the groups of the types of stitches. What? But yes. So I don't have to sweep the whole screen. I can sweep the header, but I can also sweep the whole screen. <gasps> Magic. So I, I, I love the it. I like. Oh, and I don't see the one I want here. I can sweep up as well. So just figure this is the same type of system you have on your phone where you're sweeping left or right as you're watching TikTok or YouTube or whatever you're, you're watching, it's the same reaction because it's still just a sweep of the screen with your finger. Oh, I want that stitch pattern. I'm going to select that stitch pattern. 
it's automatically loaded for me. Tension set, stitch length is set, stitch width is set. Now I can sew. Only thing I need to pay attention to really is which presser foot it's telling me to put on there. And right now it's telling me to put my eye on because I selected a decorative stitch. Let's say I'm sewing this on a quilt and I want to use this for part of my quilting stitch. I can still use smart feed. There are some decorative stitches that we can actually use our smart feed system with. This happens to be one of them. So we actually did think of more than just, oh, sewing and decorative stitches. How can we make them better? How can we make them more useful? How can we make them user friendly? So that was one of the nice features that we have in some of our decorative stitches is to be able to use that smart feed system. I now agree. let's talk about one other feature on the machine that I find rather important, especially as I hate to tell you this, we get older and we forget things. And last week I was sewing on a project and I was using a particular stitch pattern. And I made alterations to it. But now I don't remember what those alterations were. This machine has history. This machine will store no. the last 10 <laughs> stitch patterns that you've sewn on the machine with your settings. So if I made this stitch pattern shorter or longer or narrower, it's going to, and I sewed it, it is going to be stored in the history for me. And I can go pull that stitch pattern back up. Tim, I've sewed on this machine. I didn't know about that feature. <laughs> oh, sometimes I go back and forth between stitches and I'm like, I want the one that I had like two times ago. That's awesome. Oh my goodness. And it's automatic. So you don't have to worry about turning that feature on. It's built into the machine. There are so many machines out there that have a memory and you need to store it into the memory. But with this one, those last 10 stitches that I've sewn are automatically stored in the history on the machine for me. Just making it so much easier to go back and I can retrieve this one just by touching it. That one does not like my smart feet. So I'm going to reach behind me and take off my smart feet. My warning has gone away. I'm free to sew. So that's a very nice feature is to have that history. But you know what? How often do we need some help when we're trying to learn a new machine? Um, I need a lot of help, Tim. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so I'm going to sweep my top menu and go back over here to support. So support gives me the book. So down here, I have my instruction manual. It is built into the book. It's like a PDF. I mean, it's built into the machine like a PDF. And I can scroll through the pages. And I get to the page I want to read. I can zoom in and move it around so I can still read it because sometimes the print's a little small. But the book is only good for so much. Some things you need a little bit more information on. So that's where we have operation panel and main body. So if I touch on my main body, it's going to give me a breakdown of different pieces that I can go in and look at or different functions. So I'm going to pick this one down here that says presser foot lift. And it's going to show me an image of what the presser foot lift bar does. It's going to give me some text information on how to use it. And it's going to tell me how many pages there are or how many screens there are for help just on the presser foot lift. There's three screens here. So I'm going to scroll to the next screen. See, it's reiterating here that I can use the button on the front of the machine. On the last screen, it's telling me it's showing me with the knee lift. So it's showing me the three options I have to control my presser foot. Kind of cool, right? Uh, yeah. But you know what? Very. That's only part of the fun. This machine has Wi-Fi in it. I know. Everybody just went, what? <laughs> yes, this machine has Wi-Fi in it. The Wi-Fi allows you to access certain things on the internet. I'm going to go into them in depth for you in just a moment. But it also has other educational items pertaining to the machine, such as this digital tutorial. So now, Barb, you know that other screen I have running in the background? Yes. If you could pull that up and play that screen. And while you do that, I'm going to walk over to that computer so I can control it. So the the Digital tutorials are actually animations. Now, I said earlier I was going to play a little Wi-Fi piece for you. I mean, I was going to play it, play a little pattern for you. But here on this particular machine, going into the help and going into the, the online portion of it allows me to 
take my screen. I'm going to share this other screen just in case here. And it's actually showing you how to thread the machine, but watch. I can zoom in. Wait. And I can rotate the machine so I can actually see the movement of the needle threader. Oh, how great is that? So there's a QR code on the screen and I use my phone to access it and it will start to play this animation for me. Now I'm going to make you dizzy here for just a minute because I want you to understand the depth of these animations. Okay, go slow though. <laughs> what? That's I can go to any angle on the machine in any of these animations. That's the integrated dual feed in the back that we yep. love so much. That's our smart feed hanging out the back there. Yes. And there's a video on how to do that also. So as you can see, we've actually gotten beyond the point of just giving you a book and giving you text and giving you little visual aids like the vignette pictures. We've actually given you animation as another portion of help. So this is accessible from the machine to your iPhone, to your Android phone, to your tablet, anything that can scan the QR code off the machine when it displays. You can come in and see the animations and play them and pause them so that you can understand what the movement is actually doing. This one is actually showing you how the needle threader works. Wow. Awesome. Kind of cool, isn't it? Machine. Really cool. So I'm going to show you the other one again here. So let me switch screens a moment. Because this one is actually showing you how to change out the needle plate. So you see the screwdriver is prying it up. You pop it out, you lay it off to the side. Now I, I need to zoom in here. It may be on a diff, it may be only showing your one screen, Tim. So I'm going to, um, oh, there we go. I see it now. Very cool. This is what you explained earlier. Right. So that's taking the plate out, putting the plate back in, changing the feed dogs. You see, we're not taking any screws out. We're just using a screwdriver to pry them up and out. And I'm going to rotate the screen so you can see from the back side how it's actually just fitting into the back of the feed dogs, popping them out. You lift them out. You slide the other ones in, put them in at the angle, and just press down. Wow. So you don't have That's to have how easy it is to change the feed dogs and the straight <laughs> and the plate to go to straight stitch mode. So those of you who want a TL2010, you can have that and not have to have a separate machine to do all of these other amazing features. I love it. How wonderful is that? I just thought the animations were just fabulous because they just gave us so much information and at a level of detail I didn't think anybody else could match. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Hey Tim, we have we're reaching the end of the show. Okay. Um, we do have a lot of questions that came in. Do you mind okay. if we do a speed round on question and answer? Sure, not a problem. Okay. Um I'll bring your other screen up and just a moment. And then we'll get to those questions, everybody. And if you haven't done it yet, please uh, comment, hashtag all brands, and uh, we'll do a giveaway at the end of this broadcast. Now, you said that you were going to do, Tim, a, um, a surprise? Yes, I'm going to do a surprise. So I guess we'll do it now for you. Oh, okay. Okay, so I'm going to show you two. So you get two today. So you remember I said earlier about my hand problem? Well, that to me is an issue with just free motion quilting and thread painting and things like that. And for those people who don't have that hand problem coordination, we have a new tool from Juki for you. We call them quilters paddles. Oh, I've seen these. I've seen these. So they grip the fabric on the back. You simply rest your hands on them and you can move your quilt with them. So you have one for each hand. Oh, that's great to have. So these are brand new. They are available for our dealers to order. Most of the dealers don't even know about it yet because I got to jump the gun today and give you a sneak peek, Barbara. 
It is a surprise. I didn't know. I've never seen these before. So what is and the course, you know, Juki is all about the blue. So we have to have our, our fun toys in blue. Love it. I love it. So this is one. But let me show you another one. For this one, I'm going to take one of my quilts that I, I did some time ago and just put it underneath the, the foot for me. And in the past, when I tried to do free motion quilting, there was a little ring. Can't tell you what the trade name was, was of it, but it was red. It was about a quarter inch in diameter and it was a solid circle and you had to fit it underneath the foot. A lot of times here you are with the quilt and the foot and the ring and you're trying to get it to slide underneath the foot. So it was kind of a wrestling match. Mm -hmm. Well, how would you like a quilter's ring that has a gap? Woohoo! Yes, so please. the gap will actually fit around almost any foot on a sewing machine so that now I can free motion quilt with the ring. Don't have to worry about lifting the foot. Don't have to worry about taking the foot off. It's not in my way because my ring is not a complete ring and I can take it on and off. You can see I'm even got the regular A foot on because it has that nice gap in there. Once again, it has the grip on the back to grip your fabric. And this is the eight inch ring. So if you have a smaller machine, you don't necessarily need the bigger ring, but this is an eight inch. But I have a bigger machine here. So I have an 11 inch ring as well. Wow. And you can I buy see. these eight inch or 11 inch, or you can buy the set. So the 11 inch is great for our 12 inch throat machine and our sit down long arm because it gives you a nice area to work in. And you're not going to feel that you're constrained by having a six or an eight inch ring that you're having to deal with. This 11 inch I found to be very handy. We were playing with it at a show last week uh, here in uh, Lakeland, Florida. And everybody was like, ooh, I kind of like those. I like that size. It's manageable. You don't feel like you have a 16 or 18 inch ring that's too big for you. 11 inch is actually a good size to work with. The other nice thing is you don't have to grip this. It's not like you have to hang on to it to make it move. You simply rest your palms and you can move everything easily to get your quilting done or if you're doing thread painting. So those are our new little toys. They're called Quilter's Rings from Juki. Quilter's Ring 8 inch and Quilter's Ring 11 inch. You can buy them individually or you can buy them as a pair. Okay. Well, we'll How's that for a surprise? I am so excited about that. And so we just found out, so we'll be working to get those on allbrands.com uh, very soon for you uh, to uh, purchase. Thank you for sharing that with us, Tim. Sure. So let's hit some questions. All right. So let's try to do a lightning round. Um, so I'll ask the question and you answer in the shortest way possible. <laughs> Ready to go? Okay. Fire away. And how many layers can this machine sew? I've sewn eight layers of denim on it. Very cool. Um, is, is the surprise available in Canada also? The QVP products are available in Canada. You have to find a QVP level dealer in Canada to buy a QVP product. Cool. Uh, do these machines have drop-in bobbins? Yes. Virtually all of our household machines are drop-in bobbins except for our low mechanical only machines. Can this machine be attached to frames? I can answer that. <laughs> yes. They can. And the longer arms are very uh, helpful for that. Uh, yes. Getting... Actually, we actually have a new tabletop frame that we're getting that is actually released. Uh, so the 12 inch throat machine will fit on that frame. It is a clamp uh, system. It's not a rolling system. So you clamp the quilt on, you quilt the area, and then you move it to the next area and quilt again. And um, stitch regulation is available. It's called Sure Stitch Elite. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, here's a question about the history. How long will the stitches stay in the history? They stay until you reset the machine back to factory default. If you sew a new stitch pattern, the oldest one will drop off. So it's, it's a constant rotation of 10 stitch patterns. If you select a stitch pattern and you call it back from history, it creates a new spot in history. Thank you. Okay. Is there a hard copy of the manual also available? There is not a hard copy available. Okay. But you can download a copy from the jukiquilting.com 
website. If you look under the Coco Chi machine, it will show you a catalog and a manual and you can download them. So it's, it's probably in PDF format, right? It's a PDF format, yes. And it's so not small. you control find and then type in instead of mm -hmm. having to look through the table of contents. Yes, you can. can. <laughs> That's helpful. But okay. On your Wi-Fi, all the chapters in the book, there's videos for them in our YouTube channel. Very cool. Very cool. Is there a buttonhole attachment? Yes. Our standard buttonhole attachment on our machines is a sensor system. It is the same type of sensor system we've had for ooh, 10 years now, and it makes beautiful buttonholes. And you can adjust the gap in the middle. That space between the two sides of the buttonholes can be adjusted small, medium, or large to accommodate thin to thick buttons. Our very buttonholes cool. are very hard to beat. I'll be very honest with you. And I've sewn yeah. on a bunch of other brand machines. With the sensor system, the two-plate process, our buttonholes are dynamite. They're gorgeous. Wonderful. Do you need to oil these machines? You do not have to oil our machines. You want to have them serviced at a regular interval. And the technician's job is to provide the lubrication that is needed as needed for the machine during that servicing. You need to keep the lint out of the bobbin and hook area, taking that plate off and dusting in there. Do not use air when you're doing that. Yes, that just pushes everything further into the machine. <laughs> so good questions. Uh, here's one from, the, they had two comments that I just wanted to uh, highlight. Jessica says, this has been a wonderful, wonderful presentation. And Tim, I agree with her. Thank you so much for coming on the show and showing these, sharing your knowledge with us on these amazing machines. That's my pleasure. I, I always have fun doing it with you. <laughs> You're very talented. Uh, and here's one from uh, Diana. So going back to the foot control where you mm -hmm. have that programmable second one, she says, I always drive a car with a clutch. I think that I, I would love that foot pedal. And uh, yes, I agree. It's such a cool feature. So I, I hadn't thought about that, but you could actually two foot it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would be cool. Oh my gosh. So let's go ahead and we have a giveaway for everyone that's watching. So if you haven't yet, go ahead and comment hashtag all brands uh, right now and we'll, we'll bring up the giveaway screen. Can uh, I do all, that? You want to do a giveaway? No, I want to register for a giveaway. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh. Um, yeah. Do you have to be watching the video right now? <laughs> okay. Uh, so we'll bring that up on the screen and I will ask Jordan to go ahead and pickle, pick a winner. So we'll drum roll please. And our winner is Belinda Brine, congratulations, Belinda. Please email me at events at allbrands.com, your name, number, and address to claim your prize. And thank you everyone for watching today. I This has been very fun, Tim. I really enjoyed it. Good, good, I'm glad. I enjoyed it too. We'll have to do this again soon. Yeah, and I really yeah. enjoy everyone in the comments uh, who join us each week. So please follow us, subscribe to All Brands. We're a family owned and operated business. We service the sewing industry. Um, if you wanna see anything in particular, send us a note and let us know. Um, we're here for you to give you education and to, to make you privy on what's out there for you in the sewing world. Um, so we wouldn't be here if you weren't uh, here supporting us. So we really appreciate everyone who watches as well. So, well, Tim, it's been great. Yep, thank my you. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you, everyone who worked in the background uh, to answer the questions, including our owner, John Douthat, was I saw answering some questions. And um, thank you, Valerie, uh, doing the the uh, camera work for for Tim today. We really appreciate um, everything that you guys do. All right. Well, I hope that everyone stays creative um, and does something productive in your sewing room soon uh, because I think that that's just an amazing thing. We're so lucky to be in this industry that we're in. So 
without further ado, I hope everyone has a fantastic day. See y'all later. Mwah. Thank <laughs> you.